Thousands of people have been killed or injured after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake and major aftershocks hit Turkey and Syria. So how did it happen and why was it so bad? Well, first of all, this earthquake was very powerful. Magnitude 7.8, Turkey hasn't seen an earthquake of similar magnitude since 1939. Then there was a second aftershock, almost as powerful as the first. Both of those earthquakes were quite shallow and that means more of the energy of the earthquake will be felt at the surface where it can damage structures and infrastructure. And then there's the vulnerability of buildings themselves. Turkey upgraded its earthquake building codes after a major earthquake in the northwest of the country in 1999. But buildings predating those codes or those built with substandard materials or not built so well could have been vulnerable. Turkey and northern Syria are earthquake prone. They sit where three major tectonic plates meet and a smaller tectonic plate, the Anatolian plate, is being pushed westwards by the African plate that's driving up towards the north at about two centimetres a year. And that's putting pressure on a slip fault called the East Anatolian Fault, which is where this earthquake happened. It's probably been suddenly released to cause this earthquake. The fact there hasn't been a major earthquake on the East Anatolian Fault since the 1870s suggest a lot of pressure has been building up that was suddenly released to cause this major earthquake. Typically, major earthquakes are followed by a series of aftershocks, but they tend to be diminishing magnitude and frequency as time goes by. What's highly unusual about this earthquake is there was an aftershock of similar magnitude to the initial earthquake, with an epicenter 100 kilometers north of the first major earthquake. Offers of help and rescue teams from around Europe, including the UK, are making their way to Turkey, but they face an enormous challenge because of the size of this earthquake, the fact it's happened in quite a populated area. And also, these major aftershocks will have given a very wide geographic spread to the impact of this earthquake disaster. Typically in these situations, roads and other infrastructure get damaged, which means getting around is hard. Communications can be difficult as 4G networks get overwhelmed. It's also cold in parts of Turkey at the moment. Nighttime temperatures around the epicenter were down to minus four last night. That's gonna make rescue efforts harder, but also make their efforts much more urgent as they need to get to survivors in these freezing temperatures.